two huge, huge red flags. One was we went upstairs to look at the rooms and there was a room, it was locked, huh? So, so everybody's scared, like we from Philly, like here. Wow, go on, it's your girl, Dominique. I'm getting ready to go to the supermarket, y'all. And while I get ready, I'm gonna just talk to y'all about my worst Airbnb experience and why I will never go back to Airbnb. Like, so the year was 2020. It was a pandemic and everyone was depressed. We were stuck in the house and it was around August. So Mexico was the only place that was letting people in at, at that time. Everybody was posting, you know, about this tunnel place. I have never heard of it until around that time. Apparently, you know, it's been a thing for like an exclusive group, I don't know. But I never heard of no tell them. I told my friends about it and they're like, yeah, like everybody wanted to leave the house. So, you know, we started getting ready. Since it was such a bigger group, we looked into Airbnbs. It was just easier that way. I think I have space over there. I'm gonna show y'all the Airbnb. The Airbnb in pictures and the Airbnb in real life. <laughs> Let's just say it was catfish. Let's just use that word. We arrived at the Airbnb. First of all, it was so hard to find. The guy pinned up the location. We just were not finding it. I don't know, but somehow, some way, I think the, um, he communicated with the driver finally and he said, oh, go behind this spot. We went behind. It was like this little, like, street area and it was a lot of construction going on you got really popular around that time so people were building like crazy so that's what it was it was a bunch of construction going on so imagine you go on this little street behind somewhere in a little corner and it's a lot of construction it's a lot of like people just hanging out and stuff like that and your airbnb is like all the way at the end and it's like behind the gate but behind the gate y'all it was like about two properties behind the gate and it wasn't like a gate gate when i'm saying a gate i'm not saying you know like a secure gate i'm just saying a regular gate like a little tiny gate a little well a little tiny little thing so we go in and i'm noticing the group everybody mood change because they're like wait a minute this is not looking <laughs> and my friends are crazy so they're like this ain't looking like the um what the picture you know says everybody you know they mad they complaining then also when we got there i don't know what happened with the previous group but well i know what happened they left late so i don't know they checked out whenever they wanted to check out i guess because when we were getting there the cleaners were just you know finishing up and well they actually they weren't finished they were still cleaning but they took you know maybe like 30 45 minutes or so they were finished so we went in we're exploring the property two red flags two huge huge red flags one was we went upstairs to look at the rooms and there was a room it was locked huh so, er so everybody's scared. Like, we from Philly, like, er you know, why? That's what we need! <laughs> Lord, I'm ever on the Why is there, why is it, why are you running this Airbnb in this, is this locked room that we can't get into? And now, at this point, we're examining the, the property. So, we, we're going around, we're checking everything. And a lot of it was, it's like an open space downstairs. So we go and we're like opening the doors, we're closing them to make sure everything closes. Cause, so let me, let me backtrack. If I can find the tweets, I'm gonna I'm I'm put it in the video. At that exact time in 2020, you got, if you guys are, are big on Twitter, there were a group of black girls that got robbed real, real bad in Tulum. I mean, they were in an Airbnb just like us. They felt like the Airbnb set them up or had a role in the rob in the robbing in the in the robbery. That's the word. 
So, you know, if we were on edge. So we're, like I said, we're checking to make sure everything works. So we get to this one particular set of the balcony doors and I'm telling you, we're trying everything under the sun to get this, this, this door to close and the door will not close. So, you know, we've been traveling, you know, from Cancun, we're tired, like we're hungry. So we went to go to the, what is the place called? The supermarket, but we weren't gonna leave our stuff <laughs> in that house. So they told me to contact the host. Now I contact the host, y'all. I'm gonna, um, I'm gonna post screenshots of our messages, the host and I, his name is Andres. I'm gonna post so y'all can see. I text this man and he didn't get back to me until later. And then he was real dismissive, that's the word. When I told him about the door, he was real dismissive. Like he tried to act like that was normal. That's not normal to go to an Airbnb and have, you know, not have access to one of the rooms. What is in that room? That's scary. I mean, so the communication was horrible on his end. He didn't get back to me until like pretty late. So everybody was really scared. So I went to my friend's room because at this point I'm like, oh my God, I'm the, the organizer of the trip. I was getting stressed out. So I went into my friend's room and she was like, girl, I'm looking for a place. I'm leaving. She said, I'm not sleeping here. So then I'm like, oh God, then my anxiety started kicking in. <sighs> Listen, y'all, my anxiety be real, real bad. Like, <laughs> I get stressed out so fast. So then I started thinking like, oh my God, like I booked, I did a bad, I, I made a wrong decision by booking this Airbnb. I started like feeling guilty. You know, I felt like I was ruining their experience. You know, I started feeling real, real horrible. So then I was like, you know what? These people don't feel safe. So then I was like, you know what? Yeah, they're right. We shouldn't sleep here. So, because even if we left out, we're leaving out knowing that the door the doors don't close and also i'm gonna come back to this also like i keep telling y'all this this is an area with a lot of construction there are a lot of people outside it wasn't secure like it wasn't like you know a gate a big gate and you needed you had like a security guard you know what i'm saying it wasn't that type of that situation we had a really really hard time first of all time is expensive so there was that everywhere was booked up or the price was like through the roof so what happens next we hit the jackpot we started making phone calls at this point we started actually making phone calls and calling around i don't 100 percent remember the name of the property it was a wonderful property and you know what i'm going to do research for this video to find the property because i really will recommend it but we had to split up so two people went over i think it, it was this like couples resort called mia more or more or something like that love it was something that got to do with love i know that for 100 percent. that listen if you're going to tell them and you're a couple go over there like that place was really nice but the property we went to you know what it all worked out because the property we went to it was like a boutique hotel literally right on the beach the breakfast was so good like everything was just wonderful about it they had armed security. So, you know, even though we're on the beach and people have access to the beach and stuff like that, because it, it was kind of dark and kind of scary sometimes, but no, they have like, they have like armed security, you know what I'm saying? So you feel secure, but that was, that's what we had to do. And like I said, I'm going to insert text messages between the owner. He's a scammer. So let me let me let me let me finish up the story with that. Let me tell you what he did. He got me. And I'm gonna tell you, I'm telling you the story so that nobody ever get you. Let me tell you what he did. So at the end, I was like, dude, we're leaving. So I'm thinking he's gonna be like, all right, I'm gonna give you a refund. He did not want to give a refund. He stood firm on whatever he was standing firm on, that it was a secure place. Y'all, I'm telling y'all, it was not secure. He so his 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 idea or his thinking was. It's a security guard. Let me let me try to let me try to paint what he was calling a security guard. Remember, I told you I was a little tiny gate, and then inside it was two houses, and then outside it was construction. So, outside of the little gate, it was one guy like a little bit further down. He wasn't inside of the property. Um, we didn't have his phone number. He didn't provide the guy's phone number. Apparently, I'm guessing. This is what I'm I'm kind of guessing. 
he's maybe like a security guard for like the, the little street area like and he's a general security guard like i'm saying he was not inside of the gate if something were to happen we wouldn't know how to get to the like we wouldn't know how to call for help like he that's what i'm trying to get across to you he was outside of the gate so he wasn't he was like a street security guard i don't know if that's making sense to y'all so he, that's what the owner kept on saying. Oh, we have security, we're secure. But no, actually they don't have security and they're not secure. Like I said, if somebody were to rob us at 3 a.m., you know, the guy would not hear us. He's all the way outside of the property, like all the way. So the guy was, the guy stood, um, the owner stood firm and he would not budge y'all. And um, so let me tell you how he got me. When we were leaving to go to, the, to our um, hotel, this is what he said to me. I will call Airbnb and get back to you. Now, imagine you're the organizer of a trip. It went left really fast. Everybody is stressed out. My friends are crazy. Like they, they don't shut up. So it's it's a stressful thing. And and the owner, you know, I'm a person of integrity. So if you know what I'm saying, I say I'm gonna do something, I'm gonna do it. So I am I'm gonna say I trusted him. To kind of like contact Airbnb and see what to do, y'all. While I was in the car driving to the hotel, I went on the Airbnb app looking for like a phone number or something, you know, and I didn't see anything in my defense. Like, I, it was so much happening, I completely forgot about the Airbnb. So then later on, my friend was like, Well, what happened to the Airbnb? That's when I was like, Oh, shit. That guy ain't never get back to me, y'all. By the time I got around to Airbnb, one, Airbnb took the side of the host. I sent videos of the door not closing. I I told him that we had to go to another hotel. Airbnb took the, the host side. This, but this is what Airbnb said. We should, we, I should have contacted them within 24 hours. And then when they reach out to the host, <clears throat> when they reach out to the host, because really and truly, it don't matter. Like if the host agrees to give you a refund, Airbnb don't care. Like they'll, you know what I'm saying? But the host said he wasn't given a refund. So he took our entire money for like a week's stay. We didn't stay there. He took the entire money and um, he lied. He said there was nothing wrong with the door. Like I'm, keep, like I'm saying, I'm gonna show you guys this Airbnb, do not go there because I had went back and checked and somebody else had left a similar review. So do not go to this man's Airbnb. He's a scammer to help you guys out. First of all, I don't think you should book an Airbnb, but if you do book an Airbnb, if something like this happens, immediately have evidence. So if you said this is wrong, grab your phone and take pictures, take um, videos and go inside of the air. So actually, you know what I'm gonna tell y'all? I would say if you're still gonna book Airbnb, go in and familiarize yourself with okay this is how i get the support you know what i'm saying so that god forbid if something were to happen to you you can easily um just hop in the, the app and not trust the the, the host to <laughs> like i did to help you out because at the end of the day some of, some of these hosts are good people, but you gotta remember, some of these people are very like money hungry. You know, listen, at the end of the day, that, that all they care about is a dollar. So, and I'm just being honest with you. Hope you enjoyed this video. And I always say, you know, I hope I made a subscriber out of you. And if I didn't, that's fine. Hopefully you come back and I will get a subscriber out of you. Bye.